One of the most important discoveries in geology to occur was the recognition that the rock record is discontinuous, and therefore that you find points in time where there's gaps, missing time in our record. And here is one of these really large gaps. Above this, then, we have the Tapete Sandstone, and we talked about it a little bit. But the Tapete Sandstone is a near-shore marine beach sandstone. So think, you know, you're on the barrier island east coast, northeast of the United States, Maryland, and the Jersey Shore. And you got that nice white sand beaches, and you go set up your beach umbrella and all that. Well, back in the pre -cam in the Cambrian, when this was being laid down, it wasn't quite nearly that nice. There was no plants, no, no uh, cabanas serving martinis. But um, here you see this ancient beach environment. You can see, again, these patterns we call cross beds. So we pointed these out in the Coconino sandstone. But if you notice the cross beds of the Coconino sandstone, they're really huge cross beds. They're a slightly higher angle. You notice when you see the cross beds here, they're kind of shallow or angled. They kind of slope a little at either end. They're not as massive. And that's more typical of cross beds that are formed in marine environments. When the only place we really see massive cross beds forming today are in uh, wind-driven environments, dune fields. Think about the size of the sand dunes in the Sahara Desert. Think about the size of the sand dunes or ripples that you see underneath the water if you've ever been scuba diving offshore or uh, just walking around off the coast of the Barrier Island. They're a lot, uh, not nearly as big, and that has to do with the ability of water to transport and stack up sediment. So here you have these uh, cross beds, so you know you're in a beach environment, someplace near shore. In fact, we're right on the shores of an ancient island. Notice that the great unconformity here isn't a flat line. I come down there, it's low, rising up, along here, coming up, and it's really high right there. So here you have what we call paleotopography, meaning an ancient land surface, and it kind of undulates along. The high points correspond to where the rock was a little higher, the low points where it was a little easier to erode. As we've been coming along this whole section as we continue down the river, keep a lookout on each side and notice how the uh, the peak sandstone kind of goes up, or the surface of the Great Unformity goes up and down. And the peak sandstone, you notice that the beds don't go up with it. So notice how these beds come in and they kind of, what we term in geology, pinch out. They pinch out against these um, ancient lies. You also notice that right on this contact layer between this one and this one, there's these jumble of larger fragments of rock, mostly big chunks of quartz that have been derived from the granites around here. This is what we would call a basal conglomerate. This is the erosional surface. The oceans, this land was exposed above the level of the water, eroded down by some forces into a relatively flat plain. And then as the oceans began to encroach or transgress across these areas, it started to erode these things and chunk it up into blocks, the harder stuff, more resistant. So that basal conglomerate layer is down at the bottom. And then after you sort of used up that, you start to deposit the nice sand on top of it, this nice fine coarse sand. You'll also notice here that you have this little rise here, comes back down. This is a little sandbar on the edge of an ancient shoal or island where the sand piles up before then another big storm came through, brought in a lot of big chunks of rock, and then you do it again. Notice down here too that you've got conglomeratic chunks. They're relatively large down here. Notice that as you go up higher, the larger chunks get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you go from very dirty sand, it has a sort of pinkish color to it, to much cleaner, higher up. As the ocean got deeper, it didn't have the energy anymore to start moving these large chunks around. So you work like right where the waves are breaking or where the contact is right close to the ground. So as you go up, it cleans up into a nice pure quartz sandstone. So you see a nice steady environmental change. Here you actually have an island. That island gets full of very deeper and deeper, and now you just have lots of layers of ocean near shore marine seafloor going up above us for uh, quite a distance. And then as the seas continue to come in, the ocean waters get deeper, that starts to degrade into the bright angel shale where you just have muddy sediments. Then finally, as you reach the top deep enough that you start to go into the uh, move off limestone. So a continuous, steady environmental change from shallow water to deep water. Uh, which on one level creationists might find useful, right? Because you've got, oh, of course, the flood starts at this line 
is taken as the beginning of the flood, you would think this thing is really good. But you notice that you don't just see a single large event, one basal. If you have a single event doing this, you have one basal conglomerate, and then a nice steady stack of sand on top. Instead, you know, you had time in the system to build a little sandbar here, nice little uh, shoal here. This is quite, and each time you go through these cross bed layers, you move up, you've got just another nice beach environment being built here, near shore marine up. So there's a lot of time involved in stacking up the sediments to produce this uh, particular formation here.